niche topic to speak about because I think most people don't really give a fuck about this. But I found this truly interesting and truly hilarious on the side of things, right? So um, I've been following this girl called Brenda Hashtag for like, I think about a year online. I think I may have stumbled upon her profile maybe a two years prior to that, but I completely forgot who she was. I think I had a saved on one of my bookmarks on my Instagram and just, you know, I've got so many fucking saved items on there. I forgot which one she was, but I do remember stumbling across one of her pictures on Insta and thinking, oh my gosh, she looks amazing. And look at this girl that wears all black and just wears all white. And she has this incredible wardrobe where she splits all the clothes from black to white. And that's basically all she wears. And she's very committed to that particular aesthetic and um, wears only a particular brands from helmet newton to old and and the muster to rick owens and stuff like it's pretty um good to, it's pretty great to see from the outside looking in as somebody being a bit of a fashion addict and fan myself of her you know actively going back into the archives buying a lot of vintage shit buying a lot of stuff on sale and just being you know somebody that clearly is cares about this you know the scene in general and clearly has a love for it and is doing a lot of digging at this is great to see that on that kind of level and clearly has a real good real good eye and sense of personal style herself now one of the interesting things about brenda hashtag is over the years she's kind of you know blown up over time and become really um a kind of well-respected journalist or fashion editor director whatever you want to call her in that sense of things since she's done her amazing column at zero three two c but one of the interesting things about her is that I feel like from in terms of all the kind of fashion girlies out there that exist, she's probably one of the most likable ones um, in terms of just being very approachable, in terms of not gatekeeping brands and stuff that she's wearing, in terms of really speaking the real about the industry and the scene and what happens behind the scenes and at shows and giving people advice about what to do if they want to kind of be like her and do the things that she's doing. Maybe the over you know she does probably overplay the name dropping of fucking csm all the time but you know she paid for a course and she did what she did so i you know don't begrudge her on that but there is maybe a little bit too much mentions of fucking csm whenever she's speaking but apart from that i've kind of always been a fan of her and kind of give her a lot of props for just generally being one of the more likable fashion influencers out there because i feel like with especially with the ladies the fashion influencers girl especially on that high sort of like high end what do you call it luxury fashion end of things you know the stuff that kind of gets stocked in the market a lot of those girlies are absolute flipping bitches right they really are bitches they come across really really horrible so it's nice to see somebody kind of decent but it's also been a little bit heartbreaking to see how the internet has essentially i want to say turned their back on her but it's clear that the internet kind of isn't as big of a fan of that girl as i am clearly because they haven't really, for, you know, they haven't let her forget, you know, that she's still on this social media app <laughs> to be of service to them in some respects. So she had a bit of a kind of food par, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a running in with some people on the internet, especially on Twitter, who maybe don't really know her and didn't really take too well to her basically having a bit of a joke. It, it wasn't really done in, in, you know, to be serious, but she made like a bit of a joke online where she essentially shared this picture. And the pictures that she shared was the following. It shows her wearing what looks like clearly to be a pair of tabby heels, Mason Mangela tabby heels. And then, you know, she posted that on the Instagram stories. And I guess somebody um, messaged her directly and said, oh, my God, what brand are these heels? And then she posted both those pictures and put on the Twitter and said, am I a joke to you? Now, the reason why this is funny is because if you follow her, you'd know that she's very you know she kind of makes this it's a running part of her joke of her humor of like everybody asking her about tabbies and shit because she's well known of wearing mostly most much of her tabbies so when somebody that follows on social media especially on instagram asks a question about shoes that clearly look like tabbies genuinely she kind of feels a little bit you know hey you should know this because i'm the fucking tabby girl so this is kind of a little bit of a a 4d joke right in a in a weird way for some reason, people online, especially on Twitter, didn't get it. They didn't like it in the slightest, and they reacted very negatively towards it. As you can see from some of the quote tweets, somebody posted here, influencers and people who make a living off being influential when people are influenced by them. And it's got a gif here of Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders, you know, going through various stages of flipping, you know, um, self-hate and wanting to shoot himself and shit, right? And you've got another post here, another girl saying, it's interesting to see how this Margiela crowd both wants to maintain its reputation of exclusivity while also being totally shocked when somebody doesn't know what it is. So, you know, again, I just, I feel like it's a little bit of an unfair, you know, characterization of her because again, 
considering the amount of fashion girlies that I kind of follow and kind of watch from afar online, it's safe to say that this Brenda hashtag is probably one of the, the decent ones. She has her parts that are a bit insufferable, which I think all social media influencers have because I think it's part of the job. You have to kind of be a little bit obnoxious and insufferable online to kind of be successful. But I feel like by and large, if you follow her content long enough, you will know most of her boots are going to be from Andy. Most of her pants that look crazy might be from Rick. Most of the shoes with a split toe are going to be Tavis, Margiela's. Like, you should kind of have an idea on what it's about, right? But for some reason, people, you know, on Twitter side of things did not like it in the slightest. Um, another one, there's a gif here of someone wearing a pair of Rick Owens. Uh, I don't know what I don't want to pick a picture. Someone else says here, you can hate the shoes, but please just not. She's not a gatekeeper. This tweet was just left its intended with audience, which it definitely did. And it's got a post here clearly showing a picture sorry a, a collage of her images from you know earlier in the month which basically show her kind of detailing all the shoes of the items she's wearing so she's clearly not afraid to literally mark even the date of the item she's wearing like this is a chanel cruise 2003 top so she's not someone that kind of gatekeeps brands but for some reason you know her message left the intended kind of audience and people went crazy and another one here just answered the damn question so i'm playing a gif of that spanish dude slapping the journalist on the fucking red carpet another one here i don't know what's supposed to mean but those are just hideous i would say this to when it comes to people online gatekeeping brands if you're a fan of fashion and you like to wear cool shit trendy shit whatever it may be hot shit out there and you don't have the google app on your smartphone you are losing out you need to download that because if you download that google app what it does um on the search engine bit you can press the camera and you can essentially take a picture of something and it can reverse image search it for you online or you can literally save the image, upload that onto the search bar, and it will search that image for you also. So it can literally search an image and tell you what you're looking at. So if somebody's gatekeeping a brand and don't want to tell you what it is, you can essentially take a picture of their fit, crop the jeans, the pants, um, the jacket, the hat, whatever it may be. And if it is readily available online and it's easily to kind of be detected, whatever they do through the AI and whatnot, how it kind of runs, you can usually find it. So the, the era of gatekeeping stuff is fairly over. Unless somebody drapes something in a particular way, lays in a particular way, you can't really see what it looks like. It's very hard to kind of keep things to yourself for the most part. So if you are looking for stuff, you don't really need to ask anybody. Just download the Google app, search for it via image, or take a picture for it and it's going to work. Another one says here, gatekeeping is cringe and the shoes are fucking ugly. Who wants to watch um, easy dance practice with me? <laughs> Lols. Another one says, if you own those fuck ass Volvo shoes, you are you are kind of sorry you have to hear from me. And one says, I might only want to feed in this and why you don't know what a tabby is. So clearly that's obviously what the reaction was online. And the reason why I mention it is because since then, this lady hasn't turned on her replies since then her replies have been completely closed there's been it's a completely shut down policy when it comes to people who can reply on her social media and i feel like she's probably got you know it probably must have shook her to her foundation to seeing people online who probably just you know didn't probably know much about her and just seen that little snapshot and thought she was a bit of a bitch and have never kind of forgiven her since then and i guess she just you know isn't very um able to handle that level of uh negativity coming away so she just turned out to reply so now if you scroll through her twitter you will see here that no one can reply when it kind of gets grayed out you can see most likely she turned off her replies and unless i guess you follow her, you're in a circle you won't be able to reply to a comment so it's basically just turned into a one-way stream of content creation um and no real kind of conversation or back and forth goes on or funny commentary or love or anything in the comments unless you want to obviously quote retweet um you can give her a bit of love in that way but in terms of leaving a reply on her content um brenda hashtag has let it be known that her flipping um twitter side of things is definitely sharp for business she wants nothing from you guys leave me the fuck alone which i can definitely 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 understand but it kind of is <laughs> what it is